Hello students and welcome to Smart Kids Tutorials. In this video, we will be solving uh, the science paper that came for this term, uh, term 2's Qua Board paper uh, for April 2022. Okay, this was for uh, 30 marks and time was an hour and 45 minutes. Let's begin solving the paper. The first question that came was select uh, from question 1a was uh, select uh, the most correct alternative given below each statement and write the completed statement and the first question under that was olfactory receptors detect dash and the choices were these taste smell sound and touch so olfactory, olfactory receptors re uh, refer to the receptors that are present with in your nose so that is why the correct choice is b smell next question the brain is responsible for dash. Uh, the choices are thinking, regulating the heartbeats, balancing the body, and the fourth choice is all of the above. So, this is not a difficult choice over here because the brain is responsible for thinking. We use the brain to think. Uh, it also regulates the heartbeat. Secondly, uh, thirdly, uh, it is also responsible for balancing of the body. So, the correct choice would be D, all of the above. Next question, question 1b and you were given a figure like this and uh, what you were mentioned over here was glands and hormones play a vital role in living organisms and this is for 2 marks and you were given this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 markings. You say first one said refer the diagram and identify the parts 5 and 6. So 5 is over here, 6 is over here. So um, though the diagram is not very good, um, very small I would say, uh, it, sh it should have been a little bit enlarged for uh, to avoid confusion especially uh, where 5 and 4 are. Some students may get confused and also in case of uh, 1 but uh, otherwise if you know the diagram well you should be able to distinguish especially 6 uh, these are referring to uh, ovaries you clearly see uh, the umbrella shaped uh, figure over here that these are the two ovaries over here ok so ovaries are uh, secrete hormone that is uh, estrogen so that is the ovaries 6 and we are also said 5 so 5 is over here on top of the kidneys there so on top of kidneys you have the adrenal glands so that is your first answer second one says state the function of part 1 so 1 is over here so what is 1 1 is a pituitary gland and it secretes the growth hormone which regulates uh, growth as well as development of the body Okay, so that's your answer for this question or answers for this question. Next, uh, you are asked to draw a scientifically correct diagram of human nerve cell and liver. This is for two marks. This is question 1C1 and you are asked to also label uh, dendrite as well as exon. So this is a figure of a, of a, a human nerve cell and uh, the dendrite is out here and the exons are over here okay so do not confuse the dendrites with the nerve endings nerve endings are the tail part okay and in, uh, in the head or the where the nucleus is the cell body the endings are the dendrites so this is the dendrite what you have to mark you only have to mark the two okay not this entire this is the complete figure uh, but you need to only mark dendrite here and exon over here uh, with and draw the a neat diagram that will fetch you two marks. Question 1C2. The question is uh, write the molecular formula of the first two members of the homologous series having functional group COOH. Okay. So, see, uh, you have uh, um, this is the answer actually uh, HCOOH and CS3COH. How do you get this? Is because of this. 
actually they are just differing by a regular number. Here have a look solution. This is the general formula for this CN H2N plus 1 COH. So, the first one we take n equal to 0 not n equal to 1 n equal to 0. So, when we take n equal to 0 wherever there is n you substitute it with 0. You get C0 H2 into 0 plus 1 COH. So, 2 into C0 means there is no carbon atom and uh, 2 into 0 is 0. What remains is 1. So, 1 atom of hydrogen and you have at a link to COH that is the carboxylic group. So, this is what you get this is formic acid and then you have um, next one you take n equal to 1. So, wherever there is a n you substitute it with 1 we get C1 H2 into 1 plus 1 which gives us CH3 because it is 2 into 1 would be 2, 2 plus 1 is 3 CH3 COH that is ethanoic acid. So, this belongs uh, to uh, this form uh, homologous series ok and they are differing by CH2. Next question 1D1 uh, actually question uh, 1D is for 4 marks and there are like a total of 4 questions. Uh, first uh, what it says is attempt the following. The first question says under first question you have Carbon has the unique property to form bonds with other atoms of carbon and you have been given the structural formula of the skeletal you can say of uh, carbon ok how they form bonds with each other. First question says under that question 1 question 1 D 1 A says um, name the characteristic property of carbon as depicted in the above figure. So, this property is known as catenation property of carbon atom to uh, form multiple bonds with other carbon atom is called catenation. Next question was give any one re reason for this unique ability. So, <coughs> for that we should know about the valency of carbon. Carbon is a tetravalent atom that is its four valence electrons can be shared by other atoms. This carbon atoms form bonds with each other giving rise to catenation. So, that is the answer that you need to provide for this particular question. Coming to question 1D2, this is for 1 mark. You have uh, members of uh, homologous series CH3OH which is methanol, C2H5OH which is ethanol. Then you have a third one, the, the next one would X would be having 3 carbon atoms. See, this has 1 carbon atom, 2 carbon atom third one would be having 3 carbon atoms. So, that would become propanol that is uh, C3H7OH. Next one would be C4H9OH they have uh, missed out on the OH so that would be butanol uh, and uh, the last one Y would obviously be pentanol with 5 carbon atoms this is how it ok. Uh, the first question says state the name and molecular formula of compound Y. So, compound Y we said is pentanol. So, the molecular formula is C5H11OH and uh, they are all differing by CH2 by the way uh, having the common functional group as OH that is hydroxyl group alcohol group. <coughs> uh, how we name it is with uh, OL as the suffix because of the functional group hydroxyl and uh, because there are 5 carbon atoms. So, instead of pentane we put pentanol ok that becomes the prefix. Next question write the structural formula for compound X that is over here and uh, the molecular formula is C3H7OH ok. Now, the structural formula how you write is there are 3 carbon atoms so that becomes the backbone and then we fill up the rest with hydrogen atoms making sure that uh, one of the spots is kept for OH ion ok. So, it essentially uh, replaces the hydrogen one of the hydrogen uh, ions with the hydroxyl ion and uh, it does not you do not have to really put it over here like how I have done you can put it down over here or you can link it anywhere else ok, but there should be one hydroxyl ion and the remaining should be filled up with hydrogen atoms as long as there is one hydroxyl ions and the rest are with hydrogen does not matter. So, there should be 7 hydrogen atoms in total like over here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 
and 7 in total. Okay. Next question. Question 1 D 3. Question is which of the following hydrocarbons will give addition reaction and why? And you have um, been given this compounds over here C2H6, C3H8, C3H6, C2H2 and CH4. So first we need to know what will give us addition reaction. Only unsaturated hydrocarbons that means having double or triple bond can undergo addition reaction. If you so first we can rule out the ones which are saturated hydrocarbons. The saturated hydrocarbons are those having only single bond. So that would be C2H6, ethane, um, C3H8, propane and CH4 which is methane. That leaves us with C3H6 and C2H2. C3H6 is propane having a double bond and C2H2 is acetylene having a triple bond. Okay. So these are unsaturated carbon hydrocarbons and only these will undergo addition reaction. Okay. Next question. Question 2A um, says match the physical quantity from column A with the measuring device in column B. Column A gives us uh, first one electric current, uh, second is potential difference and column B we have galvanometer, ammeter, uh, then you have micrometer, voltmeter. So these are measuring devices but uh, electric current we use ammeter and potential difference to measure potential difference we use a voltmeter. Okay, So these are the correct choices ammeter and voltmeter. Here you go. Next question to be and the first part say we are given um, uh, a pyramid, a food pyramid. So you have a grass, rabbit, fox, tiger. This is for one more. We are asked to name the producer and the secondary consumer in the above food chain. So this will be the primary uh, producer or the producer in grass. Next would be the uh, primary consumer which is in this case is rabbit but we are not asked for the primary consumer we are asked for the secondary consumer which in this case would be fox and tiger becomes the tertiary consumer. So all you have to do is mention grass as the producer and fox as the secondary consumer. Next question is what are alloys used in electric what, sorry why are alloys used in electrical devices like an electric iron. This is also for one mark and the answer is here alloys generally have a high melting point as compared to individual elements. The electrical heating devices must have high melting point so that they do not melt even at high temperature when an electrical current passes through the device. Thus alloys are used in electrical heating device. Next question, question 2C attempt the following. Uh, the first part on the right is and this attempt the following uh, question 1 uh, sorry 2C is for 3 marks. So the first question under that is if in an electric circuit the current passing through a conductor is doubled what will be the change in heat produced. So for that you need to know the formula okay the heating effect of current okay um, H equal to I square R T the H is the heat produced I is the current R is the resistance and T is the time. So heat produced it says the current passing through a conductor, conductor is double. So I is doubled it says so if okay what will be the change in the heat produced. So heat is directly proportional to the current. If you double the current that means the heat also will go up. However, the heat will not double. In fact, it will become four times. Why it will become four times? Because over here, let's say we take I as one. One whole square is one. But if we put instead of that, if we double it, doubling means it will become two. Two whole square will become four. So that is directly proportional to the heat that is produced. So it is equivalent to four times. So that is heat will be four times now. That will be the change in the heat produced. Next. 
question, uh, this is second question. It says a wire of resistance 1 ohm is divided into two halves and both halves are connected in parallel. Find the new resistance. So you have a wire and let's say if we divide it into two parts. Okay. So and both halves are connected in parallel. So if you divide this into half, that means the resistance also will become half, right? So half will be resistance 1, half will be resistance 2. Then you will have to calculate the combined resistance for that, the effective resistance. So R equal to half ohm, okay, and since both are in parallel, you have to take, use this formula 1 upon R equal to 1 upon R1 plus R2. So when you calculate, we get 1 upon R equal to 4, which if we take reciprocal of uh, 1 upon R, we get re uh, resistance is equal to 1 upon 4 which upon dividing gives us 0 0.25 ohms. So that is the answer over here. That is the new resistance. Okay. Next. Uh, another problem. A simple electric circuit has 24 volt battery and a resistor of 60 ohm. What will be the current in the circuit? The resistance in the bracket says given the resistance of the connecting wires is negligible. So this is a direct case of applying Ohm's law in this case, wherein you have been given resistance and you have been given the potential difference. You have to find out the current and uh, Ohm's law as you know, uh, we give it by the I mean, voltage is equal to um, current into resistance. So we in this case need current to find out. So this is how we write it, I equal to V upon R, V is 24, R is 60. So we divide 12 to the 24, 12 5 is the 60, we get 2 upon 5. If we divide this, we will get 0 0.4 amps, okay. So that is the correct answer, that is the current flowing through this simple electric circuit. Okay, now question uh, 2C has had choice. Okay, we have completed one part of it. The second part is this. It says, uh, how does the resistance of a wire change when its area of cross section is doubled? So, for that, we need to know uh, how we measure resistivity. Okay. Now, resistance is found to be directly proportional to the length of uh, the wire and inversely proportional to the cross sectional area of the wire, which means that if the cross sectional area is increased and the resistance decreases uh, or if the cross sectional area decreases then the resistance of that particular wire increases. So that is uh, the relationship that you need to understand. So as cross sectional area of the wire increases resistance of the wire decreases and as cross sectional area of the wire decreases the resistance of the wire increases. So the question here asked was how does the resistance of a wire change when it is a area of cross section is uh, doubled. Okay. So if the area of cross section is doubled then, then it will become half of what it is right now. Next question 2C a resistance of 8 ohms is connected in parallel with another resistor X. The resultant resistance of combination is 4.8 ohms. What is the value of resistor X? So we have been given one resistor having 8 ohms. We have been said that it is connected in parallel with another resistor X which we need to find out and uh, we are given uh, resultant resistance of combination as 4.8 ohms. So R1 equal to 8 ohms we can take R2 which is resistor X we need to find out and the resultant combination is found to be 4.8 ohms okay that is uh, 4.8 ohms so this is how we calculate 1 upon rp equal to 1 upon r1 plus r2 1 upon 4.8 equal to 1 upon 8 plus 1 upon r2 and if we calculate we should get our uh, resistance the uh, resistor x the, its resistance is 12 Ohms. This is the working of that problem. Question 2C3, what will be the current drawn by an electric bulb 
of 40 volts when it is connected to a source of 220 volts. So the power is given here as 40 volt. Voltage or the potential difference is given as 220 volt. Uh, we need to apply this formula VIP voltage into current should give us power. Uh, we have been given the voltage or the potential difference. We have to find out the current and we have been given the power as well. So from here we reach here and we put 40 upon 220 that gives us 0 0.18 amps. This is our Okay, so 2C is done. That was the choice for uh, between those three questions that we solved before to these three questions for three marks. Question 2D1. Uh, in the following crosses, write the characteristics of the offspring in F1 generation. Okay, and uh, we've been given a cross over here. So this is uh, homozygous dominant in both the cases, round and yellow. Um, crossing with round and yellow uh, that will give us round and yellow seeds only okay so here you look the parents from here we get the gametes capital R or capital Y in both the cases and when we cross them we get uh, capital R capital R capital Y capital Y means uh, homozygous dominant round and yellow seeds that is our F1 offspring and in the second case, you have homozygous recessive, wrinkled and green. So in both the cases, same uh, outcome. However, the outcome as in uh, it is homozygous recessive, that means wrinkled and green seeds you will be getting uh, in case of the F1 offsprings. Okay? And that's what we are asked to find out. Next, question 2D2. Name two processes that influence the formation of new species. So there are a number of them. I'll just list down two of them. You can choose any one of them. Uh, mentioned over here, uh, genetic drift and natural selection. Next question 2D3. State a point of difference between acquired and inherited traits. So acquired traits are the one that a person develops during his lifetime. So that means the ability to play a particular sport or uh, learn about a language or maybe uh, to play an instrument, something like that, is, those are acquired traits. These are not passed on from one generation to another. On the other hand, inherited traits are present in the person since the time of his birth and are passed on from one generation. So you have no say in that, in the inherited trait. It's not like a choice, I don't want that particular trait. Maybe your hair color or the length of your hair or um, maybe the skin color, you know and various other things which you get at the time of birth which you uh, part of your uh, development um, which you have no say into okay these are not acquired acquired traits are those where you learn something ability uh, based on your ability learn to swim learn to play a particular sport those are all acquired traits okay. next question 2d4 State any one way by which age of a fossil can be estimated. So these are the two ways mentioned in the textbook. You are free to write any one of them. Okay, I mentioned both of them over here. Relative uh, dating in which the fossils and layers of uh, rocks are placed in order from older to younger. And radiometric uh, dating which allows the actual ages of certain types of rock to be calculated. So any one you can mention of them. So with this we complete question 2 as well. So uh, here I would just like to remind for those uh, who haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel because you will be coming across many such videos in the future as well. And uh, if you like watching this video, hit the like button. Share it with uh, your friends as well as classmates who can also benefit from videos such as these. And do not forget to click also on the bell icon. So anytime there is a video that comes up, you will receive a notification as well immediately and you can access the video okay coming to question 3a and uh, as we know that there are only three questions in this paper each question of 10 marks okay and uh, in case uh, of science paper there are only 30 marks unlike maths where there are 40 marks and other subjects so we are coming towards the end of this paper now
this is the last question question 3 this also comprises of 10 marks just like the other two let's uh, complete this paper question 3a observe the correlation between the first pair and complete the second pair so this is oxygen o2 oxygen so o3 will be ozone and here it's lion which is a carnivore and rabbit which eats grass is a herbivore that completes the pair question uh, 3b1 state any two properties of magnetic field line i mentioned three there are more but uh, these three are uh, more easily remembered so they are closed and continuous curves they are directed from the north pole towards the south pole outside the magnet and you can or you can even write two magnetic lines never intersect each other i mentioned three you are asked to mention any two properties that you know next 3b2 decomposers play an important role in the ecosystem give a reason uh, decomposers those will decompose so obviously they break down complex material into simpler material making it available for the soil okay so let's put down over here let's have a look at the answer decomposers play a critical role in the flow of energy through an ecosystem they break apart dead organisms into simpler inorganic materials making nutrients available to primary producers you know who are the primary the plants okay once uh, uh, anything is dead it gets decayed and decomposed into from uh, broken down from complex materials into simpler inorganic materials which are then easily ex uh, or made accessible to plants plants take up this inorganic material through from the soil through their roots and the cycle then continues back again next question 3c1 state the principle of an electric motor so the principle of electric motor this says an electric motor that is a dc motor works on the principle that when an electric current is passed through a conductor placed normally in a magnetic field a force acts on the conductor as a result of which the conductor begins to move and mechanical energy is obtained so this is uh, the principle of an electric motor that you need to write next question 3c2 a magnetic needle placed near a current carrying conductor is deflected why answer is a current carrying conductor produces a magnetic field around it this magnetic field applies force on the magnetic needle of the compass and thus the needle shows deflection so this question just keep repeating every now and then every year you should know these questions question 3c3 in a statement of fleming's left hand rule what do the following represent so fleming's left hand rule uh, it's referring to the direction of thumb and the direction of first finger okay or as you may also call as the index finger direction of thumb direction of the magnetic force and direction of the first finger direction of the magnetic Field. So force magnetic field, okay, and the last one will refer to the conductor, the third finger, that is the middle finger. Okay, so you are asked only for the two fingers. So these are the one, the thumb and the first finger. Question 3D1. Write the electronic configuration of elements in group 15 and group 18. So group 15 you have phosphorus okay and group 18 you have argon ar now to write the if you write the electric configuration of 50, uh, phosphorus which is 15 it's 2 comma 8 comma 5 okay and for argon 18 that is 2 comma 8 comma 8 so this is a noble gas configuration 2 comma so all the three are filled over here you have 2 comma 8 comma 5 so it's space for three more electrons to fill over there but we are asked only for the electric configuration and this is so these are referring to the atomic numbers here you go 15 and 18 next question 3d2 so this question 3d uh, has got a choice okay uh, just like how you had question 2 c like with question 3d also has a choice you are free to answer both or you can answer any one of them um, so next uh, magnesium sorry name the elements having valency 
2 okay so uh, that would be magnesium and sulfur magnesium is over here okay so that uh, has got a valency see it's configuration the atomic number is 12 for magnesium and it's 2 comma 8 comma <coughs> 2 sorry and the second one is sulfur sorry you can't see it under this it's under 16 sulfur 17 is chlorine and 18 is argon so 16 would be like this 2 comma 8 comma 6 uh, here there are two electrons in the valence so valence electrons are two in this case now that means it has the ability for losing two electrons it can give two electrons and in doing so it will attain the noble gas configuration of 2 comma 8 or stable gas configuration in case of sulfur uh, it is 2 comma 8 comma 6 that means 6 electrons are there in the outermost shell so it can't lose 6 electrons so it has uh, so the easiest thing for it to do is it would be to gain 2 electrons and in doing so it will attain the stable gas configuration of 2 comma 8 comma 8 so in both case how here there is a difference here uh, it would look to give away its 2 electrons and here it will look to gain 2 electrons that is the difference but both have valency 2. Question 3D3 Which element has the largest atomic ra radius and justify? To understand atomic radius, two things. You have to look at uh, elements when you go down the group, and you have to look at the elements while moving across a period, that is horizontally. Down the group, vertically. So, down the group. Uh, the atomic radius increases because you keep adding number of shells okay you have learnt how to draw the various orbitals or the shells you have the k shell l shell m and n you know you've learned it in the class 9 as well so in the k shell you have only two electron space for the two electrons then if you draw another shell then you have eight space for eight of them so down the group the number of shells increase every now and then you go down uh, a uh, the group you'll have an additional shell okay and as a result of which <coughs> the atomic radius increases atomic radius see atom is uh, is like a sphere so that means a circle okay and that is why you have something called as a radius so increase in radius will only happen if the number of shell increase or the shell more shells are added to that so down the group atomic radius increases but across the group the atomic radius does not increase so the highest uh, uh, sorry the atomic radius decreases from left to right in case uh, of a particular period so across the period the shell size will decrease because the effective nuclear charge which is there uh, increases across a period and as the uh, effective nuclear charge increases, the attractive force of the nucleus pulls the electrons closer to itself, thereby shrinking the shell and of course the atomic size also will decrease. There. So that is what happens. So we will go through this. As atomic number increases, the number of shells increases and then atomic radius also increases. Along a period however, as atomic number increases, the nuclear charge also increases and hence the nuclear force of attraction increases too. Thus, atomic radius decreases along a period. Okay, so now we are over here shown everything from one particular period. So, easily we can say that okay, uh, there is no question of saying because it is a different uh, period. Uh, so, we have a uh, uh, change in the atomic radius. So, that is not the case. What we need to see is that though they belong to the same period, from left to right the atomic radius shrinks or decreases. So, that means the highest one should be one at the extreme left and in this case it has got to be sodium. So, sodium should have the largest atomic radius in that case by that logic. Question 3D4 Both sodium and chlorine have the same valency. Okay, this is a case of what we just went through some time back where we were referring to magnesium 
and sulfur okay but there was a difference though the valency was the same uh, one was giving and one was accepting same thing over here they have the same valency you are asked are they chemically similar also giving they are not chemically similar because in case of sodium you are giving away one electron so it's the configuration of sodium as you see atomic number of sodium is 11 so the configuration electronic configuration is 2 comma 8 comma 1 so it has a larger tendency to give away this one electron and in doing so it will gain uh, become a stable gas have at, attain or acquire the stable gas configuration of 2 comma 8 okay so this is about sodium who wants to give one electron in case of chlorine which has a an atomic number 17 so group 17 um, it looks to accept one electron because by gaining one electron it is going to acquire the stable gas configuration of 2 comma 8 comma 8 so both these though one needs to give another needs to accept so because they both need or uh, need to give or accept one they have a valency of one but there's a difference in case of this it has to give so both have a different electronic configuration and thus the chemical properties have also got to be different one is a cation one is an anion that is all so positive one forms a positive ion another one will form as a negative ion sodium will have a positive ion and uh, chlorine on the other hand will become a negative ion so chemically they are not they are not similar Question 3D1, so that is the second choice of this question 3D question. Uh, write the number of valence electrons of elements B and E. So we have been given this table. Uh, valence electrons of B and E. So B, uh, this is period 1 of course, and this will be the second period. So in this case, uh, it will have uh, in the second period group 1, it is actually uh, what you get. You get lithium okay so group one and uh, atomic number would be three in this case so we write the electronic configuration is two comma one okay and we are asked to write uh, the number of valence electrons of elements b and e so valence electrons refers to the number of electrons in the outermost shell so in this case it will be one for element b in case of uh, e which is out here under group 17 okay so under uh, group 17 for the uh, second period you will have uh, fluorine okay so here the atomic number will be 7 and you have 2 comma 7 so again the valence electrons would be 7 remember valence electrons are not the same as valency okay valency refers to the combining ability valence electrons refers to the number of electrons in the outermost shell so in this case it is 7 in case of e it is 7 in case of b it is 1 next question 3d2 name the inert gas elements shown in the above table I means this table okay an inert gas would be the ones having a stable gas configuration so in that case we can only think about uh, c and f okay c will probably have uh, all group 18 elements actually uh, have stable gas configuration but just to show you as well uh, for period one there would be helium with atomic number two okay so both uh, the k the k shell is completely full the space for two electrons both of them are full and in case of the second period and that would be fluorine uh, 2 comma 8 okay sorry this is a mistake it's supposed to be neon not fluorine fluorine is uh, 2 comma 7 so atomic number however is correct uh, that should be, be 10 and the electronic configuration will become 2 comma 8 so uh, you just need to 
mention which one so you can mention just c and f you don't have to mention the elements and the electronic configuration you just ask name the inert gas elements shown in the above so you just need to mention c and f so that will be your answer question 3d3 which type of ion will be formed by element a just to work okay so we are asked to form what type of ion so it has one uh, electron so it will form a positive ion. it will actually share it so that will be it will form a cation why a belongs to group one there is only one electron in its valence shell therefore it tends to give or share one electron to complete its octet space for two and forms a cation so that is what it is question 3d4 uh, will element d be larger or smaller in size than b give result for your answer so again this refers to what we have already discussed with respect to the atomic uh, radius so as we said atomic radius down the group increases but atomic radius across a period from left to right always decreases so here we are asked uh, will element d which is over here be larger or smaller than b b is obviously going to be larger than d okay because b and d both belong to the same period so we are left with only one criteria to check that is where does b fall and d fall in that period so b falls at the extreme left compared to d which means which makes uh, b ha will ha obviously going to have um, a larger atomic radius compared to d because effective nuclear charge or the nuclear nuclear attractive force on d will be much more than that of on b and as a result of which the electrons will be pulled much much more closer and consequently the atomic radius will also shrink or reduce or decrease in size so d and b belong to the same period along a period as atomic number increases the nuclear charge also increases and hence the nuclear force of attraction increases too thus the atomic radius decreases along a period thereby decreasing the atomic size of the element okay so d will be smaller in size than b that is your uh, answer okay so with this we complete the science paper that came in april 2022 uh, if you have any queries with respect to the paper or anything that you did not understand you are free to email me at smartkidstutorial at gmail.com or you can even leave a message under this video uh, and I will try to answer it. Uh, just go to the YouTube channel Smart Kids Tutorials for 9 and 10. Uh, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel and also click on the bell icon to receive notifications whenever a new video is uploaded. Do not forget to share this video and other videos that you have liked with your friends as well as classmates and if you like watching this video please click on the like button okay so with this we end uh, the video on science paper april 2022 term 2 that uh, was goa board's science paper okay for this 2021-2022 academic year thank you very much for watching and keep watching for more such videos. Thank you.